You're listening to the Connected Parenting Minute with Will and Carrie Ann Sandfest. This podcast is a conversation about parenting using connection first, trauma informed principles. Because when you lead with connection, everyone feels seen, which is the foundation to a more peaceful home. This podcast reminds you that you don't have to be a perfect parent, but we can all get a little better, one connected parenting minute at a time. Good evening, and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Will Stanfest, and I am so glad to be here with you. Joining me this evening is my lovely wife, Carrie Ann. Hey. How are you doing tonight, honey? I am doing well. It's been a lovely day. We got to spend some time outside working in the yard, so that was really fun. We just, I don't know, I'm getting really excited for summer. It was really nice out. Got some work done on the deck, replacing some deck boards, cleaning up the yard. Got some really cool lighting set up, which I'm so stoked about. It's like around our pool. And so I'm I'm excited to spend some time out with the fam this summer, enjoying the lights and the night evening air. So it's exciting. It is nice. The weather's pretty nice up here in Minnesota this week. And so we've spent a little more time outside. We had a bonfire the other night with the kids doing s'mores for the first time this season, which Mm -hmm. is hilarious because we, of course, did it the day that everyone took their showers. And so when you shower in the morning and you're a child and you have a s'more at night, you're ready for bed and you're not clean. No. Well, we also managed to like smoke the entire house last night when we were going to bed. I was like, oh, our entire house smells like smoke. That's awesome. Yep. But it was fun. It's nice out though. So it's, it's been enjoyable. Um, before we get too far down the rabbit hole. Of everything else, we should probably get to our podcast topic for tonight. Yes. Tonight's topic is how many compliments versus criticisms does your child hear from you every day? Yeah. That's an interesting topic. Well, why don't you uh, elaborate a little bit more on what you mean with that? Well, it this came from... I'm trying to remember the exact situation, but this is came from some self-reflection on my part a while back when I was realizing, and it might have actually been a comment one of my teenagers made to me, I was realizing that my interactions with one of my kiddos were primarily negative. Mm -hmm. It revolved around correcting or criticizing, saying, why did you do it this way? Oh, that dish isn't clean enough. Nope, your room's not clean enough. You didn't pick up your dirty socks off the floor. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it was one of those things where I had taken a moment and thought about it. And I was like, wow, I think like three quarters of the conversations I had with him started with a criticism or something he did wrong or whatever. And it really struck me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of these, uh, I think it was one of these actually like these Instagram, you know, like there's a sunset and like it's got an inspirational quote on it. You know, (laughs) these goofball things that you you see when you're scrolling the Internet for too long. Mm -hmm. And it said something along the lines of remember that the voice that we use to speak to our children becomes their inner critic. Yeah. And it kind of that one hit a little home for me. Right. Because I was I think I was probably frustrated about interaction. I'd had with him and it was like ooh, wow when I think about all the things I've said to this child over the last several days Mm -hmm. how many of them are negative and critical and just not good like I wasn't proud of that it really made me think that that's something that I need to change in Mm -hmm. my own life and I know it's something that a lot of parents struggle with this stuff I've talked to other parents about and I feel like it's a similar experience that we've that a lot of people have had well yeah it doesn't feel good when you realize that a huge part of your interactions with your kids is negative. So I think one of the things we need to think about is, does this actually matter? Yeah. So the first part of this we want to talk about is, does it matter? Right. And so I think when we we were talking before, we talked about the fact that kids are going to have, as they grow up and as they become adults, they're going to have plenty of negative people in their life. They're going to have plenty of people telling them they're not good enough. They didn't do something right. They need to fix something. They need to. They don't look good. They're not funny. Right. All the things. And so when we talk about that and we realize that, I think part of the self-reflection of that is, do I want to add to that voice? Do I want to keep that narrative going for them that they aren't good enough, that they don't do things correctly? Yeah. And as parents, we don't want to feed that voice. We get frustrated when our kid is being picked on at school, when somebody's bullying them, when they aren't invited to their friend's party. Exactly. And so... 
I think that part of this is just considering what's going on. So our kids will have a lot of people that talk negative to them, that put them down, tear them down, especially in middle school, teenage years. Mm -hmm. And as parents, we don't want to feed into that. We don't want to be just one more negative voice in their lives. A lot of us want to be able to build our kids up and support and encourage them. And we don't realize day to day how often things come off. And I think that'll go to our next point. But first, I wanted to touch on the fact that does this matter? We have to think about it with the lens that as adults, when we have people that we engage with well, that we feel like we have a pretty good relationship with, Mm -hmm. we're going to maybe trust the person a little bit more in different areas of our life. And I know that if I have someone who's constantly criticizing me or I don't feel good about myself being around... I'm not going to go for them to them for advice. I'm not going to go to them for anything important, really. Eventually, yeah. I'll get to the point where I'm like, I'm just done. And I think that's a trap that a lot of parents get stuck in, right? Mm-hmm. Where you hear about these teenagers that can't wait to get out of their house as soon as they turn 18 or as soon as they go to college or, you know, whatever the situation is. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of parents get so stuck in the day-to-day crisis management that they don't realize how put down and how negative and how just commanding, you know. Yeah, exactly. It feels like we're kind of losing control because our kids are getting older and they're either doing things the way that we don't want to do them or we don't want them to do them. And so we start to maybe even get a little bit more controlling because we want to prove that, hey, we know what's better. And what, and if we, and if we pause for a second, what's behind that is fear, Mm. especially, especially for some of us that are raising foster and adoptive kids. It's very easy to go down that, oh my gosh, if I don't nip this behavior in the bud, Mm -hmm. my child's going to become a career criminal selling drugs and doing awful things or something like that. Exactly. And in reality, this comes to something else I saw this other week on Instagram is we need to focus on parenting the child we have in the situation we're in, not parenting towards that fear of what we're afraid might happen someday in the future. Yeah. And it's really easy to go there, especially with something like lying or stealing or whatever, especially when they're a little bit older and you start panicking going, oh my goodness, this is going to be awful at the end of the world. And it doesn't have to be a foster adoptive kid either. I mean, it can be a total neurotypical kid. I'm fully capable of catastrophizing over my neurotypical 20 year old as I am over my adopted 12 year old, you know, exactly. Which kind of takes us to our second point, Mm -hmm. which is to take count and, you know, to really take account during the day of how many compliments versus criticisms we have. Exactly. Which I think leads into this idea of self-reflection, stepping back a minute, not getting caught down in the weeds and the catastrophe of what could be or the fear of what might happen. But Mm -hmm. take a moment and really look at it. Yeah. Because there are positive people in the world. Naturally positive people. Naturally positive people in the world. Mm -hmm. I might not be one of them. And that's okay, (laughs) but I can still take a moment and really notice, like honestly, think back through the day. What are like three or four or five conversations or two if my child is hiding in his bedroom all day? Mm Mm-hmm. Why is he hiding in his bedroom all day? Is he trying to avoid me? I think we've told that story before. Mm -hmm. We had a teenager tell us that once of, well, every time I come upstairs, dad, you get on my case about this or that. It's like, ooh. Oopsie. Ouch. Well, and I think too, it's not just even criticize. I mean, like when we're critiquing them, when we are correcting them, when we're nagging them about something, when we're shaming them, when we are criticizing them, all those things kind of fall into the same category. And I'm not saying blow smoke, you know, in your kid's life and tell them they're wonderful and they're perfect and they can never do any wrong. I mean, we're being realistic about this, but more often than not, we tend to be negative towards our kids because we want to see them do good things as adults. And because they're kids, they're not going to do them right the first time, maybe the second time or even the 200th time, Mm -hmm. but they're learning and they're growing. And so we have to see kids where they're at and recognize the good things about them and be sharing that. So that goes into our next point of we get to rewrite the narrative in that. We get to take stock of where we're at and we can change that because we're the adults. Adults devise a plan and follow it. Children do what feels good. Exactly. And so as adults that want to compliment our kids better, that want to not be a constant negative voice in our child's lives, because A, we believe that it matters for the relationship and we want to 
change that, what do we do? So you're saying we want to rewrite the narrative. How do we practically rewrite the narrative? What would you tell somebody? I would say that we have to start focusing on the good things. So take, for instance, when like you're in a new relationship, say way back in the day when like we were dating, we would think about all the great things about that person that we really liked. And we need to focus on those and we look for those fun things. And I think to a large degree, we tend to, to focus on the thing that's right in front of us. And so if we see the problems with our kids, we're going to focus on those and that's what gets our attention. So we actually have to be really intentional with focusing on the good things and focusing on the positive things. That might be two things right now for your kid and that's okay, but we need to take stock of those. So one of the things that like I'm actually considering doing, I haven't, but it sounded like a really good idea when I came up with it. And I'm going to take a three by five card and write some of my kids' names across the top of it and start writing down the things that I really enjoy about them or that they do really well or that they're working really hard at Mm -hmm. and take some time and actually think on those things and say those things out loud to myself, you know, taking time to really be intentional with looking for the good things about each of our kids especially the ones that I might struggle with a little bit more relationship wise. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a good practice to get into for any of our kids. Right. To really recognize the things that we see in them as positive things, because honestly, there are not many people in their lives that are pointing those things out to them. Mm-hmm. And how many times have you had a truly genuine compliment really just strike you and you just feel good all over? Yeah. You feel like somebody really sees you and understands you and called out something intentional that you do well. And it just, it makes your whole day. It might make your whole week, depending on how bad of a week you've had. Exactly. But in order to do that with our kids... We have to be thinking about that. We have to spend a minute and recognize those things. I mean, make a challenge out of it. Take those ideas, those things you notice positive about your kid and challenge yourself. Can I say two of these to my kid today? Can I say three of them to my kid over the weekend? Can I say four? You know, make it a competition maybe with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Who can find a way to sneak in a compliment for that kid that you two are both struggling with? Mm -hmm. See who can sneak in an extra compliment or two here or there. And just if you notice that kid, let's be honest, some of them have a pretty tough exterior and you won't see it right away. Like you may not see the actual reaction. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you that child goes back to the room and they're like, oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, and remember, we're not doing this for the short game. We're doing this for the long game, too. That's a good point. So not only are we doing that for them, but we're also doing it for ourselves. Right. I mean, you're listening to a parenting podcast. I have to assume to some degree you want to be a little bit of a better parent, like maybe just a minute's worth. Yep. But it is something that we're always trying to grow. We're always trying to learn and we're always trying to do a little bit better being parents. And so this is an investment for yourself, too. Like, how can you or how can we change that narrative and how can we get better at it? One of the things that I was going to say, if you have, you know, you have your list, but some of those might be too vague or hard to do. You can even script, write down on a card. Hey, Jimmy, you did really, we worked really hard on that math test. I am proud of you. It might be something that simple. It can be. Yeah. But having that reminds you of saying, hey, this is important. Uh, One other quick thing I think is really fun. Sometimes I think we've talked about this I don't know, sometime letting your kid overhear you give a compliment about them when you're talking to someone else. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, you can even be really, really, really underhanded and like pretend to have a phone call about something and just be like, oh, yeah, Susie really did a good job when she cleaned the kitchen today and washed the dishes, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's ways that we can find regular rhythms of investing into our kids. Okay. Well, that kind of covers our main topics. So let's do the three big takeaways that we want people to have from this episode. Let's have you recap it, babe. Number one is... We have to believe that it actually matters. When we realize that our words have meaning to our kids and that over time, it does impact them internally of what they think of themselves, we can start being more intentional with it. Because I will tell you, I'm the first person at the end of a stressful day to be snapping and to be really easy, really quick to criticize 
I'm really quick to be like, why couldn't you just do the things that I asked you to do? But over time, when that becomes my default, that is not helping them long term. So the first one is that we have to we have to really think about it and and believe that that becomes our inner voice eventually. And number two? Number two is take account. Pay attention to how often you're criticizing your kids versus complimenting your kids. How often you are showing them the ways that they fail versus building them up. Again, it's not all rainbows and unicorns, but being realistic about it and and taking stock and recognizing that this is important. Absolutely. And then finally, number three is to rewrite the narrative. And that means practically either really writing out new narratives, new scripts, new go-to phrases or things you can say to your child to encourage them or build them up, making a list of the positive things you see in your kid, whatever that is. Just notice those things, make a list, find ways to sneak compliments in throughout the day. And remember that we're just building habits over time both Mm -hmm. for them and for yourself as a parent. Because I guarantee you when, you know, even if you have a little itty bitty newborn in 20 years from now, you may look back and say, oh man, I wish I'd done that a little bit differently. And so we want to just continue working and continue moving towards good things for our families and for our kids and for ourselves. Yeah, especially if you're struggling with criticizing your child, you're not going to 180 this in day, a week, or a month. Even a year. Maybe even a year, but we can get better little bits at a time. That's what this podcast is all about. And so I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. I'm glad to be recording again. As always, reach out with compliments, I guess with criticisms. We can handle it. We're making this podcast for you. So if there are things you want to hear, please reach out. We'd love to cover topics related to listener feedback. And as we sign off, we want to remind you that you don't have to be a perfect parent, but we can all get a little bit better. One connected parenting minute at a time. Thank you so much for listening to my mom and dad's podcast. I hope you feel really inspired today and remember to subscribe for the next episode. For more parenting tips or to connect with us, check out the Connected Parenting Minute on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can send us an email using connectedparentingminute at gmail.com.